interrupt this program to bring you a special live broadcast. An important meeting is about to take place downtown, and our man on the spot is Dan Rathernot. Thanks very much. On this day, July 2nd, 1776, history may very well be made. We are here at Johnny Hancock's insurance building, where an active group of so-called radical citizens have assembled. They're reviewing the rough draft of a new document based on a motion earlier today by Richard Henry Lee. Its purpose is to establish our own government rather than the King of England. John, what reaction do you expect from the King? Well, hello, T-R-O-U-B-L-E. Well, <laughs> you don't think this is going to start a revolution or anything, do you? That's all in the movies. It won't happen to us, I know. That would certainly be bad for the insurance business. That would be too big a price to pay. And finally, John, why the fancy signature? Anything to get a name. Here's another gentleman that's been behind this independence movement from the beginning, Thomas Jefferson. Hello, beautiful. Are you sure you like the idea of overthrowing the British government? Do I like what? I sure do like it, baby. Since January of last year, many of the colony's radical parties have been clamoring for independence. What else are you demanding? Little warm puppies and children and girls of the night. Say, I just saw George Washington come in. George, where have you been? Talking on the telephone, setting up another day. Last summer, you were appointed commander-in-chief of the New England troops and immediately scored a victory over General Gage in Boston. What other key locations do you consider potential battle sites? Fresno, Bakersfield, and beautiful downtown Burbank. Later historians may one day pay note to the fact that you overcame overwhelming odds in Boston. What was it that really motivated you? It's the first time that my father seen me play. What did your mother do that influenced you most as a child? Pull an apron off and do the Charleston for us kids. G.W., if you're successful and you get the rest of the fellows to sign this, where will the new government be headquartered? On I-10, about a mile out of Shaky Town. We may be looking for a president soon. And although there has been no official announcement, could that be your true reason for being here today? I've dodged all your questions. You shouldn't be suspicious of me. Well, now, ladies and gentlemen, here's a man that's never at a loss for words, old Ben Franklin. Who brought you down here today, Ben? Eleven long-haired friends of Jesus in a chartreuse microbus. Have you had a chance to carefully review this declaration before signing it? I've been too busy drinking. It seems like there's quite a crowd gathering here today. A lot of townspeople in just to hold a few truths to be self-evident. So 50 or 60 people just sitting on the cars. I couldn't help but notice that telegram you just received from that Boston silversmith, Paul Revere. What did he have to say? Here I am in Dallas. Where in the hell are you? Ben, you've got a reputation around the city of brotherly love as a brilliant inventor. What new inventions are you working on now? Budweiser buckles and soft-faded Levi's. That's going to wrap it up from down here. I think we can be assured that the course of human events over the next couple of days will long be remembered and celebrated in the years ahead. This attempt to overthrow the British government may indeed cause a few fireworks. This is Dan Rather Not. Thank you, Dan. And thanks to the people, these patriots may get the states united yet. Meanwhile, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to remind you to drive with care over this 4th of July weekend. <laughs>